Okay, today's lesson is called Children in Crisis, Hope for Child for the Children of Divorce. Today something happened that made me feel as if my heart would break in two. My parents told me they're getting a divorce. All kinds of thoughts rushed through my mind. No, it can't be true. Why did this happen? Did I cause it by being too bad? What will happen to us? I wish I could make everything right again. So begins the book, Can Anyone Fix My Broken Heart? by June Thomas Cruz. And it's a book for kids who are experiencing divorce in their families. There are countless numbers of children in our world today who can relate to this child's comments. They know the pain of watching their parents split apart. How widespread is the problem? What kind of scars do divorce leave on a child? How do different children respond to the pain of divorce? What can you feel? What can you and I do to help these hurting children? These are some of the questions we will consider in this section. Statist Statis Go ahead. <laughs> St statistics suggest the problem of divorce continues to plague our nation. The Heritage Foundation reports each year, over one million children, American children suffer the divorce of their parents. Moreover, half of all the children born to married parents this year will experience the divorce of their parents. Divorce has grown significantly over the last half century. In 1935, there were only 16 divorces for every 100 marriages. In 98, the number had risen to 51. In um, George Barna said in his research, born again Christians are just as likely to get divorced as non born again adults. Over 33% of all born again individuals have been married, that have been married, have gone through a divorce. And Barna goes on to say if the existing relationship between cohabitation living together, and higher rates of divorce persist, we can expect this to be a deluge in the coming years. So what does all this mean to you and I? What does it mean to the children? The children, whether you teach in a good news club or after school, or whether you teach in a WANA, a kids club, or master's club, this is just not a community problem or a lower income problem. It's a national problem. We as children's workers should be in the forefront of this epidemic. These hurting children today will be leaders of for tomorrow. We need to be attuned to the situations children and young people face and help them through this. There's no doubt that divorce leaves scars. Child psychologist Dr. Lee Salk said, Divorce is the forever funeral. He says to a child, the trauma of divorce is second only to death. Children sense a deep loss and feel they are suddenly vulnerable to forces beyond their control. It's like a sense of loss that one parent has disappeared or comes and goes. Debbie Barr in her book, Children of Divorce, stated this. Divorce is the legal means by which husbands and wives pull the plug on marital life support system. To some, divorce is a mercy killing. To others, it's nothing short of murder. Either way, the marriage dies and the children who mourn its passing are thrust into a no man's land of grief. The marriage is death, but the parents live. She goes on to say, finally, members are the same, but life is different. Contradictions like these make divorce one of the hardest griefs for a child to bear. So what are some typical things that a child experiences? And in your notes, this is going to be a fill in the blank. So number one, loss of a stable life. The child has to move. It usually means that he has to be with mom or dad. He may have to move to a new house and a new neighborhood make new friends, a new school, a new teacher. When I came home from college, it was Thanksgiving, and my folks said to me, we're getting a divorce. 
I was literally, by Christmas, I was literally homeless. I was the oldest. Think of what it was like for my brothers and sisters who were between 15 and four and a half. Each of them suffered some type of trauma that divorce affected on into their whole life. Two of them got into drugs very seriously, and two of them had multiple marriages. Lower loss of neighborhood friends and friends. This can be devastating. There are friends they know and who know them. They confide in their friends. When these children move, it takes time to build trust in new friends and individuals. Sometimes they do not have time to build up trust before they have to move again. Then there's a lower standard of living. That's your fill-in standard of living. Usually it means that one parent doesn't have extra money for things. And the children may not understand because they've been used to a certain way of their life. Maybe they can't go do things with their friends like they used to. They used to. Many times the mother may have to work two jobs because she's the caregiver of the children. Or it may go the other extreme where the opposite parent is giving the children everything they want to buy affection. The collapse of family structure. This goes beyond the immediate. Think of the extended family. Grandparents, aunts, cousins on both sides are affected. The non-custodial grandparents, custodial grandparents may be cut off from seeing their grandchildren, especially if there's a relocation. Loss of security. Children will have lots of questions. Where will I live? Will I have my things from my room? What will my school be like? Will I ever see my mom or my dad again? This can be very unsettling and confusing in the heart and mind of the child. In a younger child, this is evidenced by discipline challenges. In teens, this may result in them getting involved in gangs or even in drugs. The trauma of divorce brings confusion and struggle to children. Both parents are diminished in their capacity to be a parent. Children are faced with conflicts of loyalty, and there's a consistent and abiding fear of uncertainty about the future. All this can prompt children to respond in a variety of ways, such as anxiety, fear, worry. These three we put together because there's real fear here. The question arises for children, what is happening to my family? What have I done? A lot depends on the personality of a child. If that child is melancholic, um, the situation magnifies, and there's a greater fear, anxiety, and worry. Anger is another way that children respond. They see this as entirely against their will, and sometimes they even blame God. Why did you not answer my prayer, God? My brother responded with anger, in, even into an adulthood, because he did not know all the facts and situations relating to the divorce and what happened in, for, prior to that. Later, as an adult, when he found out the truth, it led to more anger. Resentment. When it, with anger comes resentment toward their parent, toward their friends. They may look at a friend whose family is intact and resent the fact that his is falling apart. Why is this happening to me? Why didn't it happen to them? And why questions build with them resentment? And then there's depression and helplessness and hopelessness. And these three also go hand in hand, especially for a a tween or a young adult. There's a deep sadness, that grieving of loss, and this loss can be so devastating, and depression leads to helplessness. They feel impotent in a divorce situation. They can't make their parents get back together. They can't make it right, and this depression and this helplessness leads to hopelessness. 
because of anything to do about the situation. During this time, there's often, often a high case of suicide and because they can't fix this. The child needs counseling and he needs a listening, caring adult to think through these feelings for that forever funeral syndrome. Separation and anxiety. These children feel a real fear of being separated from the ones they love. Since one parent abandoned them, they feel the other might also. This develops into a greater sense of dependency on the custodial parent. Will he or she stay? This brings out the cleanliness and dependency in children. About three months after my parents announced that they were getting a divorce, my brothers and my sisters moved to California. It was final. My dad moved back into our old house, but I was told by my mother I couldn't go see him. You see, he was my stepdad, but he had been my stepdad since I was seven and a half years old. He was the only dad I really knew. What does an 18-year-old who always was closer to her dad, what's she going to do? What, how could I afford to stay in college? How could I even afford to buy toothpaste or pay for my shampoo or my books? How, when could I afford and when could I see the rest of my family? I was in Ohio. They were in California, so far away. What happens to my brothers and sisters when I'm not around? Do you see how that anxiety of separation increases? And abandonment issues. These issues are often carried out into adult life. A wonderful film to see is Overcomer. It's about a young girl who lives with her grandmother because her mother died and her grandmother says her dad died of an overdose. Her actions manifested are stealing and hiding things, attitude, loneliness, and non-acceptance in school. Then she learns her father is not dead, but very sick in the hospital. And we're not going to tell you the rest of the story, but it's a good example of how a child goes through those different stages of that. Age-related responses to divorce. Debbie Barr again in her book, Children of Divorce, says, long-term research on children and divorce is recently illuminated an interesting fact. A child's initial response to divorce does not necessarily predict that person's eventual adjustment. It appears that Many factors combined over time to shape the overall effect of divorce on a child's life. So we're going to just look at some, quickly, some different um, ages of children. Toddlers, two to four-year-olds. You would just be surprised how a young child can sense that tension in a home. Actually, this age group responds the most dramatically. It could be regression, returning to baby-like behavior. They can't really verbalize what they're doing, so they go back to bedwetting or crying or thumb sucking. They might want to be held or fed. Babyish habits, that dependency increases, they become clingy. And some just withdraw within themselves. That's passivity. They don't want to play. It may even become zombie like in their actions and behaviors. The younger children, five to eight years, regression builds in. They become convicted that their behavior caused the divorce, that bad things they did caused their mom and dad to go away. You need to remind these children over and over, they are not the cause of the divorce. It was an adult decision and choice and problem. Abandonment fears. One parent has left, worry the other will too, this fear often follows. Yep. <laughs> Click too fast. And fantasy. Make believe is part of childhood, a wonderful part of it. Imagination personified. But for that child, five to eight year old, it takes it to the extreme. They build up entire scenarios in their minds. In this fantasy world, they hear their parents talking again. 
They move back together, maybe even to a new home that's bigger. They might even get a dog if they've never had it before. They tell their friends this because they believe it to be true. Older children, 9 to 12 year olds, anger at parents, sometimes at God. Ben, age 11, said, people don't understand that divorce is very hard on their children and that most children feel terrible the rest of their lives. Alienation, withdraws from parents, self-protective. They do not want anybody to get close before, because they fear they'll let them down. Disappointment, deep sadness, disappointment that the older, the adults in their lives should find no solution, so they build a shell around themselves. Older children have a before and after divorce mentality that their frame of reference. You may hear them say, well, before my mom left us, or before dad got a divorce, they've become hardened at this age. Spiritual disillusionment, they feel that God has let them down. They begin to question God. They don't, why doesn't God care for my family? If you say he loves me, why did he let this happen? If he loves me, why didn't he fix it? They ask hard questions. And then the teen, 13 through 19, again that resentment, that anger, fear. And sometimes they have fear that they are in this outcome someday too. They fear is because their parents got a divorce, they will also. My dad and his dad got a divorce, maybe I will too. It must be in my blood. There's a lack of ability to make a long-term commitment. I was 18 when my folks divorced, almost 19. I was at college. I was out of the loop, so to speak. Divorce still hurt. My brother Mike, who was 15 at the time, has had three marriages ending in divorce. And he's had many relationships that ended in anger. He blames the women for the problem at times but it's his lack of self-esteem and fear of rejection that really ultimately leads to the downfall of any relationship. But Jesus has made the difference in his life. There's withdrawal and depression and loyalty issues. Holidays become minefields of disaster. They're emotionally drained. You can ask my husband. Um, this became a real issue in my life when my sister came to live with us. And um, we were early married, had a child already, and she would say things about my dad, my stepdad, that weren't really true. And um, I got mad at my mom because I knew that they were lies and those lies were being told to my brothers and sisters. It was emotionally draining. Who do I believe? Who do I trust? What do I say? Heritage Foundation shows that divorce may have traumatic long-term effects on every aspect of a child's life. We're going to go through this quickly because we do want to give you some hope for a children of divorce. So one is typical responses, physical, mental, and emotional health. Divorce drains a child in all three areas. The physical schedules change, especially if they're with one parent during the week and another on weekends. Mentally, they have to think about which of their belongings are in which house and what should they take. And emotionally, they are pulled in so many different directions. They're usually mom and stepdad or dad and stepmom or mom and the man she lives with. More frequently, there are learning disabilities, and they're more likely to repeat a grade or to have a higher dropout rates if they get older. And this is often due to stress, frequent relocation. It takes time to get to know a new teacher. It takes time to catch up. They might have missed a lot during a move. Plus, there's other adjustments that children have to make. Sometimes they get the feeling, I just don't want to try anymore. They feel like it's not worth the effort. Social relationships and problems. 
One researcher found children of divorce suffer most as adults when they start forming intimate relationships. At this point, anxiety and fear of loss come back to haunt them, creating a bumpy road to happiness. They're more likely to get involved in drugs. Addiction. In girls, addiction may take on the form of bulimia or anorexia. More frequently involved in crimes. One study that showed that crime in many of the cities corresponded to the divorce rate. The rate of the incarnation for juvenile delinquents are 12 times higher for children of divorce than for children living with married parents. In my own family, that um, happened. One of my brothers started stealing right away. He was only 16, but he ended up in the penitentiary, and none of us knew about it. And um, my, when my dad didn't find out till months later and could get him out because he was underage, but he still continued on and got into drugs very, very badly, which carried on into his adult life, even into his 50s. My one of my sisters ran away from home at 14, and she also got heavily involved with crime, drugs. Divorce can lead to disaster for children. Do you feel depressed? Yeah. Sometimes we do this. We Some feel... errors to avoid. Are you ready to avoid errors? I'm ready to avoid errors. First thing is, do not forbid the child to cry. It's a way of letting emotion out. They need to express their emotions rather than internalize them. They need to cry. Maybe you were not allowed to cry at home. Tears are cleansing. I remember going, well, that was you. I remember going back to college. <laughs> I went back to college and I would crawl up on my bunk bed. I would turn my head to the wall and I would just let the tears flow. Not even my roommate could, could console me. Do not cast blame on the child, especially. Most children already feel responsible for what happened. Never add to a child's sense of guilt. Questioning them about what they have done when they already feel guilty adds more guilt. Sometimes we want to help, but, and we desire we mean well, but we might inadvertently say the wrong thing that casts blame on the child. Putting down the parents. Most children are protective of their parents even when one parent has hurt them terribly. And then um, pretending that nothing has happened. Avoid talking about the divorce will not help. Children need to talk it out but they also need to have a listening ear, a safe place where they can express their fears, their anger, their hurts, their worry. And be careful not to give false hope of reconciliation. Let's just pray about it. I'm sure your mom and dad will get back together. Yeah, children live with that fantasy that that's going to happen. While that may be a worthy goal, don't feed the child's fantasy with hopes that can never be realized. Never encourage a child to take sides. And then tell children, avoid telling children they're better off. The child is grieving a loss. Don't compound the grief with cliches and pat answers. This may or may not be true. The child may be better off if there was a lot of fighting in the house and alcohol as there was in my home. Keep in mind that they may eventually come to a sense of relert, le excuse me, relief that the divorce became effective because that tension which was in the home is now gone. Now that you know what not to do, let's look at some steps you should take to help the children of divorce. Call it first aid for hurting children. Listen with care, patience, and acceptance. A listening ear may be the greatest help for a hurting child. Do not be judgmental about the child's family. 15-year-old Sarah said this, 
I just don't like being isolated, especially when you know something like a divorce has happened. Acting like we're freaks or we are weird, that we are different now and not normal. I don't like people doing that to me. They just don't know how to handle it. I just don't know. They're, they're scared, I think. And then make eye contact with the child. Eyes are the seat of the soul. So give the child your undivided attention when counseling them. You need to build trust with that child over time. And this process begins by actively listening to the child with the eyes, helping them to know that from that point in time, you are there for them. Build trust. Look at their eyes. Look with your heart. Let them express how they feel. Don't try to put words in their mouth. Children may have a lot of conflicting feelings, love, loyalty for their parents versus anger at their parents. They need an outlet to express their feelings in a safe way. The Do You Wonder Why booklet is designed to let children express their feelings in writing. Other children may want to draw a picture. Some may need physical activity to allow them to burn off anger or other negative feelings in a safe way. Kicking a ball, scorching a Play-Doh, anything to keep their hands busy and let them vent. Encouraging these children to use physical outlet like this whenever they feel the need to get their bad feelings out. You may even say, I'll go to a game with you, or I'll take, we'll go to the park together. Remember to be surrounded by other people, but be there to help express um, your feelings for them as well as their feelings. And then use appropriate touch. Sometimes a hug is conveys so much and it will help draw a child out. But remember that it could just be a pat on the shoulder with a young man or a pat on the shoulder for a young girl. Just let them know that you are there to show your care and concern. And be wise and sensitive when you should do this. Some children aren't ready to be touched. And then it asks what questions, not why questions. Why questions tend to bring up, I don't know, answer. Asking children can answer questions such as, what happened? What are you feeling on the inside? These kind of questions open conversation and give you insight into the child's mental and emotional state. Let them ask questions. They often have many questions their parents are not emotionally able to deal with. Answer the questions you can without betraying confidence that the parents might have shared with you. And then remember, direct the child to God. If it had not been for me knowing the Lord Jesus Christ is my Savior and spending time in God's Word, I don't know if I would have made it. But Jesus made the difference. And I had a lady at college who I could talk to. And I had a dear friend back home. Her name was Mrs. Stevens, and she had followed me since I was 12 years old. And I could write to her, and she would send me notes of scriptures that I could look up that would help me. This word of God is the answer for children who are hurting in divorce. And so if you know the family is struggling, take time to lift them up to the comforter. Direct them to God. Direct them for yourself. Bring them up before God. Send verses to them. Send a card to them. Help them during this very difficult times. Other ways to help hurting children. Children's support groups. This might be in your church or um, in other ways like that. And um, provide age-appropriate reading materials with the parent's permission. Endeavor to speak one-on-one -on -one with hurting children maybe during your club or class hour. I don't know about you, but I have several children in my Sunday school class and even in my junior church who have 
one parent. Or maybe they have to go to another family another Sunday and they're not here. Or they have to go to another area. And so we need to help be able to speak to them. Have one-on-one -on -one time with the child. And then we know that sometimes the church has um, also suffered. In many cases, it's the least helpful in reaching out to families of divorce. We wanted you to have this class because we know that in the area that you live in and the area that we live in, divorce is very prevalent. And so maybe there's a way that you can have uh, form a visitation team. Read books, uh, Debbie Barr's book, Children of Divorce, and then Dr. Dr. Archibald Hart has this one called Helping Children Survive Divorce. This was a very powerful book that I read. Encourage church members to adopt children of divorce for the purpose of building friendships and providing emotional support. When we lived in Pennsylvania, Larry was still in the military and he was gone a lot. And our oldest daughter really missed him tremendously. And so our church had a PAL GAL, P-A-L-G-A-L, PAL GAL program in which an adult lady would take one of the girls, she would be a PAL to her, and that was part of our Wednesday program. Mrs. Kaiser followed our daughter Lori from the time she was in that group all the way through high school, college, even when she got married. We need in our churches more pal-gal experiences, especially for the children who do not have, and young teens who do not have a good um, home situation, a good support group. Provide counseling and referrals. Survey, compile a list of recommended counselors and therapists in your local area. Take a counseling course for yourself so you know how to answer some questions from God's word. And sometimes it's really necessary. When our granddaughter came back from the Czech Republic, she was struggling with separation from the country that she had grown up in for eight and a half years. And so when she came back, she couldn't speak English very well. Um, she struggled trying to make new friends in a new school, in a new home. And even though her mom and dad and brother were there, she still struggled. So our daughter and son-in-law found a Christian counselor, and she, that helped her make that adjustment just to get back to America. There wasn't a divorce, but in her life, there was a divorce from something she was familiar with. So we need to be sensitive to those things as well. Search for ways to meet practical needs. Survey people in your church to discover talents, gifts, and skills to meet physical, practical needs such as auto repair, mowing, tax consultant, babysitters, and such on. This would be such a help to those young teens who need to know that they could do something and that an individual has taken an impact on their life, especially our young men. Encourage role, male role models with this. Um, recruit capable men to teach Sunday school, be involved in junior church, and have an impact on their life. If you have a skill, bring a couple of the guys over and just say, would you like to help me today and do it with them. That's the way it used to be done. We had um, each individual taught another young man how to do it. it. was apprenticeships. So try something like that. Develop a resource center. Provide space in the church library for books and, per books and periodicals on divorce. And you might even want to provide a Sunday school class. In our church, there's a singles class. It's not just for divorced women, but it's for women who are widowed, women whose husbands do not come to church. And these women have become really supportive for each other in prayer. They have social activities together. 
and opportunities just to talk. Be sensitive to children's workers, sensitize, provide resources to help children's workers have an attitude of love, acceptance, and support for those children of divorce. Children of divorce can find hope in victory. Every morning in my quiet time, I pray for all the kids who are going through the same thing I am. I tell my friends, trust God and he will work it out somehow. The child I quoted to you in the very beginning, he knew the pain of divorce in his family. Like many children, like me, his story doesn't end with a fairy tale happily ever after. He goes on to say, often I feel scared. I know that God is my father. He will take care of me. Sometimes my heart still aches, but every day I learn more and more about my father God. No matter what happens, he will never leave me. He loves me. That concludes Divorced Children. Helping Children of Divorce.